This video will demonstrate how to set up the software on SCAD Technologies TM1 and TM2 tank monitors. The setup involves selecting options for parameters including sensor type, tank shape, and alarm type, and a calibration step for recording full and empty tank levels. The process takes less than two minutes. Options are selected by tapping the touchpad for the tank being set up, so if you're setting up tank 1, you should only touch pad 1. Since the procedure is exactly the same for tank 2 on model TM2, this video will just focus on setting up tank 1 on the TM1. When power is applied to the monitor, the lights will cycle through turning on as it boots up. To enter setup mode, press and hold the touchpad. In a couple seconds, lights will turn on, starting from the 1 8 light through the 7 8 light, and then turn off. This means the monitor is in setup mode. Remove your finger. The monitor will pause for 5 seconds on each option for each parameter to allow time to make a selection. One light will indicate the parameter and a second light will indicate the option. A flashing option light means it is available for selection by tapping on the touchpad. A constant light means the option is already selected. If you make a mistake, complete the rest of the process and repeat the cycle to fix the mistake. The first parameter in the sequence is sensor type. It's indicated by the E-Light. The first sensor option is the SCAD external sensor. This is the default setting, so the light will be constant unless someone previously set a different option. If you want to keep the option, don't touch the pad and wait for the monitor to move to the next option. The second option is for the SCAD internal sensor. Let's assume that's the option you want. To make the selection, just tap the touchpad and the light will go from flashing to constant, meaning it's selected. After 5 seconds on that option, the monitor will proceed to the next option, which is a 240 to 30 ohm float sensor indicated by the 3 quarter light. Wait 5 seconds for the next option, which is the 10 to 180 ohm float sensor indicated by the 5 8 light. After this final option, the monitor will proceed to the next parameter, which is tank shape. The tank shape parameter is indicated by the 1 8 light. We'll use the same process for selecting options. The first option is indicated by the F light, which represents a rectangular shaped tank. This is the default option indicated by a constantly lit light. After 5 seconds, the next option will be displayed. This option is a mild tapered tank shape that is indicated by the 7 8 light. Again, if the light is flashing, you can select it by tapping the pad. Next, the 3 quarter light indicates a severe tapered tank. And lastly, the 5 8 light indicates a horizontal cylinder. The monitor will proceed to the final parameter, which is the alarm type, indicated by the one quarter light. For this parameter, there are three options. The first option, indicated by the F light, is alarm on full, meaning the alert light will turn on when the level is just over 7 eighths full. This is the default option. Let's stick with this option. The next option is indicated by the E light, which represents alarm on empty. This option will cause the alert light to turn on when the level is just under one eighth of a tank. The next option is no alarm, which is indicated by the half light. The last option for the alarm type parameter is the external alarm wire. That's the orange wire on the wire harness that can be used to power external devices when an alarm condition exists. This option is indicated by the three quarter light. The selection of this option works a little differently than the others. The external alarm wire can only be selected if you previously chose alarm on full or empty. When the light is flashing, it means the option is disabled. To enable it, tap the touchpad. The light will change to constantly lit. That's all there is to selecting parameter options. Next, the lights will turn on for 5 seconds. If you need to go through the option selecting process again, tap the touchpad while the lights are on. Otherwise, the monitor will proceed to the calibration step. Next, the three center lights will flash. If you don't want to calibrate now, you could just let the flashing lights time out and the monitor will proceed to normal operation. But to proceed to calibration, tap the touchpad. You have to calibrate the monitor when the tank is actually empty or full. Both conditions must be set. Since it's not practical to calibrate both at once, you can calibrate the second condition later by entering the software setup and waiting for the parameter options to cycle through, then touch the pad when the three center lights are flashing. When the E light is flashing, you can set the empty calibration by touching the pad. If you're calibrating for a full tank, 
wait until the F light is flashing and then touch the pad. Finally, all the lights will turn off and the monitor will return to normal operation.